This movie goes over the basics of sequence diagrams. Sequence diagrams are a kind of interaction diagram, and interaction diagrams show communication among objects in a system. That is, they show interactions among objects, specify the sequence in which those interactions happen, and add the dimension of time to your diagram. Now in sequence diagram, we're taught when we talk about time, we're talking about ordering not duration, so keep that in mind as we talk about sequence diagrams. There are several kinds of interaction diagrams. Perhaps the two most popular are sequence diagrams, which you'll learn about in this and the next several movies, and communication diagrams, which you'll learn about in a different set of movies. And these two kinds of interaction diagrams present much the same information, but sequence diagrams emphasize the element of time and the sequential ordering of interactions, while communication diagrams emphasize the overall context in which interactions take place. A sequence diagram captures the sequence of actions that happen in a system, showing the time ordering of the objects that participate in the interaction. So sequence diagrams are two-dimensional in the sense that the vertical dimension of your sequence diagram will represent time, and that time works the earlier is at the top of the diagram, and as you move downward vertically in the diagram, you move to later. So earlier at the top, later at the bottom, and the horizontal dimension, which shows the different objects or participants in the interaction. So how do we show these objects? You're going to use a very familiar looking rectangle with this dashed line, which I'll discuss in just a moment, which is called a lifeline. So sequence diagrams depict objects as a named rectangle displayed toward the top of the diagram and moving from left to right. And you can name your object as you would say in a class diagram, uh, object colon class. You could also just give the name of the object. You could use an anonymous class and variations upon these. Now you'll find that in sequence diagrams sometimes objects are called participants and that's not part of the official nomenclature of the UML, but it's a useful way to think about objects in these diagrams because objects in a sequence diagram can be any part of a system that interacts with some other part of the system. So when we say object in a sequence diagram, we're not necessarily talking about just objects in the strict sense of instances of a class. So it can be helpful to think of your objects as participants. And you're going to have several participants in an interaction, just as you'd need a number of different participants for any kind of interaction. So as I said before, this dashed line that descends from an object is called a lifeline, and this is what represents time in the sequence diagram. And as I said earlier, time starts at the top, just under the name of a participant, and descends, moves downward. So earlier at the top of the lifeline, later as you move down the lifeline. Participants in a sequence diagram send messages to each other. And there are a number of different kinds of messages, and we'll be discussing those in subsequent movies. But just to get the idea, you show that a message goes from one participant to another. Now notice that when I drew the arrow indicating a message from participant to participant 2, these rectangular boxes appeared on the lifeline. These are called activation bars, and an activation bar shows the execution of an operation that the object carries out. Uh, another way to think about that is, as its name suggests, activation bar. This activation bar shows when this object, when this participant, is active. 
in the interaction. So when this message is getting sent from participant to participant 2, both of these participants are active and therefore both of them show an activation bar. So these are the basic elements that you'll see in a sequence diagram and in the next movie we'll look at some of the different kinds of messages that one participant or one object can send to another.